whatsoever you do, do quickly. That was some of the last words of one of the last nights of Jesus' life given to Judas. But what we are being told now by the Spirit is the same words, only it's not something we're doing to Jesus, but for Jesus. And what you do, do quickly. Get your house in order. Get ready. Things have shifted. Things have changed. Life is about to hit you from angles that you've never thought before. But what should be important on in your mind right now is are you ready? Are you ready? Because what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to do quickly. I had a vision some years back and I saw God create the earth and he took me back to the disciples walking with Jesus and, and the day of Pentecost. And he said to me, how would you have liked to have been in that place at that time? And I said, Lord, I think that would be the grandest thing to see you. And I, I saw by vision the, the universe being, uh, it was like dark. And then all of a sudden, just lights and flashes began to appear. Well, God's once again in a creative mode. Only this time he's taken what he has created and bringing it into purpose. There's a purpose for the things that God does. God does nothing randomly. Reading from 2 Timothy 2.20, Now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. He will be a vessel those who clean themselves will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, and ready for every good work. This scripture is giving you your marching orders. You are to be something made of silver or gold and be honorable for the usefulness of God, holy and useful for every good work. Now, there's a story in, um, well, it's told in 2 Corinthians, actually, again, an Old Testament story about a woman whose sons were about to be sold, and, and Elisha came on the scene, and he said, what can I do? What do you have in your house? And she brought out, she said, all I have is just this little bit. Anyway, you know the story where he took the, he said, get the vessels, borrow vessels all around town, Go from house to house, borrow vessels, not a few, as many vessels as you can find. Bring them. Take the oil that you have, pour it into the vessel that you have borrowed until they are full. So she got all the vessels and filled them. They were to be used for useful purposes. In this case, it was to provide for her and her sons because they were able to sell the oil. And it lasted as long as the famine lasted. But listen, church, we're in that season where we've got to be full to last. We've got to be full to last. And First Peter tells us that the trial of your faith being much more uh, precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried in the fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing, the appearing of Jesus Christ. What are you going to look like at the appearing of Jesus Christ? How is your faith going to stand? He says, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? The Bible tells us that there, the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible says in Isaiah 30, 14, Talking about the Lord, he said, and he shall break it. Talking about vessels that are dishonorable. He will take it. He will break it. He, the breaking of the potter's vessel will be broken in such pieces that it'll be unuseful for anything else. He said, you can't even use it to scoop up water or scoop up fire ashes. I will so thoroughly crush it that it'll not be useful for anything. God forbid that should be our vessel. 
Numbers 19.15 says, And every open vessel that has no cover fastened to it is unclean. If you're not covered, if your vessel's not covered with the blood of Jesus, full and covered, it's unclean. And he won't use it. He'll crush it till there's no usefulness left. Jeremiah 18.4 And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it unto another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. You see, God's going to get his vessel. He's going to get his bride. What you do, do quickly. It's time. The soldiers are getting in place. The soldiers of Christ are getting in place. The prayer warriors are getting in place. Make your house spotless. Make your heart be what it was meant to be, fully and totally unto the purpose of God. Acts 9, 15, but the Lord said to him, go, this is talking about Paul. He is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Paul, even though he had been a sinful, terrible murderer, he was a chosen vessel sent to reach the Gentiles and the kings. Hosea 8.8, 8, Israel is swallowed up. Already they are among the nations as a useless vessel. So we're talking about the difference in a vessel that is useless and no good for anything, or vessels that are gold and silver. He's not going to have a vessel that is in between. Not hot, not just hot, not just cold, not just lukewarm, but it must be hot. That's the kind of vessel he's, he's doing right now. And this generation that we're living in, and this time period that we're living in right now, I heard a minister say these words, and, and it was just so good. He said, this generation will be the most proven and the most approved vessel of all time. If it is to be used of God, we have to go through the fire. Whenever you make a clay vessel, it has to go through the fire. To make it gold and silver and precious, it must go through the fire. But the fire that's coming on the earth real quick now is in the process of judgment. It is judgment that is coming on the earth. What does judgment do? It cleans, it cleanses. And this vessel that God's creating us to be, this bride is going to be without spot or blemish, but she has to be scrubbed. You ladies who do laundry, you have to scrub the dirt out. You have to put the detergent and that in there to scrub it clean because he's ready for his bride. He's not going to wait much longer. This is the time. I saw Jesus in a vision and he told me he was the lamb and he told me, I tell my church that this is going to be the most difficult time the earth has ever seen. And he came in the form of the lamb and he was bleeding. This was to represent the martyrs. This is to represent the spotless bride that's going to be formed out of the blood of Jesus. This is going to be a baptism of fire in the people who are ready for clean, holy living. A vessel that's ready to obey God, not argue with God, but what you do, do quickly. God's calling for, for us to get into place and he's not going to wait. He's not going to tarry. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. And now's the time. Are you ready? Ephesians 1.11 says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Everything is to a purpose. When he showed me the created be a order of the the vessels that were being created, and he showed me himself walking on earth. He was showing me a purpose. You're not brought into salvation just to be saved. You're brought to salvation to be proven, tried in the fire, and be made pure and holy. This is the purpose so that we, as pure vessels, 
can show the world what it is to be like Jesus and to have him living inside. This is not meant to be some kind of works that you're doing, but what you are allowing him to do. Are you allowing him to go into your heart and make it clean? This can only happen through relationship with Jesus. Relationship with Jesus through prayer, through the word, and through the fruits of the spirit being displayed. I want to read Ephesians 4.10 because it's such an important scripture. Uh, 4.10 through 13. He that descended, that's Jesus, he came down, is the same also that ascended, he came up from death, above all heavens, that he might fill all things. He's out to fill you with himself, empty you of self, and fill you with himself. He gave some pastors, prophets, and you know the description. These were to adjust us so that we can be filled until we all attain into the unity of the faith. And I like this verse the best, 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ. We are being measured. We are being measured, church, right now. You're either going to fit the measurement or you're going to be found wanting. You see, he declared in his, in his word and in his walk on earth, what fullness with the Father was going to look like. You know, if you woke up one day and your head was arguing with your body which way it was going to go, or your body was arguing with the head, and your body says, I'm going to run to the store, and your head said, no, you're not. We're going to lay here in bed a little longer. You would be disjointed, disunified, and God couldn't use you like that. The head and the body have to be perfectly aligned. Who's the head? It's Jesus. I had a dream about that one time and the Lord told me, I saw the head of Jesus and he said, the body is not joined to the head. It's making its own choices, showing off itself. We've got to come into the unity of faith and the unity of faith means the unity of the Godhead, the unity with Jesus and the unity with the father, the head and the body aligned. We have to be messengers of the covenant. God made a covenant with us when he saved our souls. You take up your cross. You follow me. Your life no longer is yours. It belongs to me. And Colossians says, since the day we heard these things, we have not ceased to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Are you filled with the knowledge of his will or are you so filled with the knowledge of your own will that you're not crucified with Christ? Set your mind on things above and not things beneath. The book of Revelation says, then when they finish their testimony, these are those who had gone on to his thoughts and purpose and will that's when you'll see Jesus coming on the white horse, when we're aligned with his purpose and will. But in the book of Revelations, he's talking about when they have finished their testimony. Your testimony is about to be finished. And what is that testimony going to say to the world? Those who have this hope in them purifies himself, even as he is pure. Get ready. Bring your vessels out. Be one of the chosen, one that is silver, one that is gold. Amen. I hope you get this message, and I hope you get ready. Jesus is coming soon, but there's also a terrible thing that's coming upon the earth to try the whole earth. But judgment begins in the house of God. House of God, are you ready? Are you ready?